This is your weekly wrap up for Friday, June 14th, 2024. Thanks for tuning in. We have a lot to cover, so let's hop right into it. So this week's shows, we had good friend Eli Weber and Nick Van Yaman with our latest report of a presentation of the most up-to-date financial events that have been happening in the US and throughout the world. Next week, we have Dave Mahoney and good friend Dr. Scott Young to discuss all things Nasara and the latest updates on that. And uh, Chris, my business partner, and I are going to have a fireside chat update for all of you in regards to the currency site and our gold and silver offerings so that you can uh, hear it from his perspective as the original founder of the companies and the channel respectively. Latest headlines are this, the petrodollar is now officially removed from Saudi Arabia as well as OPEC. That means now they can trade in other instruments such as the RMB, Petro Yuan, gold, silver, and XRP as well as many other tools and trading going forward, but not the petrodollar. Texas plans to create their own national stock exchange in order to compete with the Dow, as well as their own digital gold-backed token, and eventually become a member of the BRICS. Fed holds interest rates steady at a 23-year high with just one rate cut slated for September, but promises four rate cuts slated for next year, at which point the economy will have already crashed in 2025 and parts of this year. Saudi Arabia officially cuts ties with the petrodollar once again, uh, which will allow for uh, other trade settlements. This happened as of June 9th, just as a reprise. T-Mobile will acquire almost all of the US cellular and $4.4 billion deal, consolidating the industry more than ever. T-Mobile is buying US cellular wireless operations as well as certain spectrum assets in a $4.4 billion deal. Once the deal is official, it will further consolidate the industry to just three or four opportunities or vendors. The announcement of the deal will cause the stock to rise 2% after hitting headlines. Expected closing date is mid-2025. Cognizant Technologies on NASDAQ to acquire digital engineering firm Belcan for nearly $1.3 billion in cash and stock options. This expands its footprints in aerospace, defense, as well as automotive sectors, according to Reuters citing people familiar and close to the to the matter. Belcan, which has been owned by a private equity firm, AE Industrial Partners, since 2015, employs 60,000 people across 60 locations worldwide, as well as some of its clients include Boeing, there's a key word right there, General Motors, Rolls-Royce, etc., the U.S. Space Agency, NASA, and the U.S. Navy. Belcan will continue to be led by CEO Lance Kwasniewski and operate as a unit of Cognizant. It's based in Teaneck, New Jersey, with a market cap of about $33 billion. In a bold move within the airline industry, American Airlines has announced a significant immediate wage increase of 17%, 17, for its flight attendants. This development comes amid ongoing labor contract negotiations that have been in motion since January 2020, but were stalled due to the pandemic. As discussions resume in 2021, uh, the urgency to finalize a new agreement has become the main focus. J.C. Penney, the last remaining original anchor of Sykes Mall Center to close. A major national department store that has served as an anchor has closed as it opened its uh, doors five decades ago. Tex-Mex le- Tex lovers have one less spot to grab burritos and quesos after a popular Mexican chain abruptly closes one of its restaurants. A Chewy's Tex-Mex restaurant in the Country Club Plaza of Kansas City, Missouri, just closed its doors for good amid an ongoing string of financial ups and downs. According to the Kansas City Star, a sign posted for the building's door read, we have permanently closed all locations and apologize for the inconvenience. We do sincerely appreciate all of our customers and their loyalty to Chewy's for many years. Meta Platforms, run by Zuckerberg, looks to make its technological empire leaner by reducing the amount of vice president positions. The move appears to be a continuation of the 20,000 employee cuts started in 2023. As pointed out in our show last week with Jim Willie, Japan's secretly buying gold in an effort to remove the treasury yield bonds that they're holding that are toxic. And they see as a result, a 22% decrease in the yen as of this quarter. Now here are some of the closings, resignations and deaths that we have to report. This one's sad for me as a New Englander because I grew up with this grocery store chain, but stop and shop the iconic grocery chain that had been around for more than a century, operating uh, more than 400 stores in the Northeast to close down several locations this year. Applebee's announces 25 to 35 uh, stores closing this year. Body Stop 
body shop, excuse me, uh, the UK, UK beauty and cosmetics retailer has filed for bankruptcy as of March 1st, according to NBC News. As of December 2023, the body shop operated 61 stores within the U.S. And we know about Macy's. They're closing down another 100 stores slated for this year. Uh, the retailer said the closures uh, would be done by 2025 and would total roughly 150 stores closing by next year. Discord, the chat platform, has laid off 173 workers. The CEO, Jason Cintron, said it was necessary to improve operations. Amazon and Google announced they will lay off thousands of additional employees in the coming months. Coach USA files for bankruptcy amidst exodus of office, office workers. In a stark reflection of shifting consumer habits exacerbated by the pandemic, Coach USA, the parent company of Megabus and other commuter services, has filed Chapter 11. This comes as a move as a company grapples with a steep decline in commuter ridership from the last several years. FedEx is looking to lay off thousands of workers across its back office and commercial teams in Europe, the delivery giant said on Wednesday. The Memphis, Tennessee-based company said it's cutting jobs and consolidating some teams in order to streamline its workforce and reduce structural costs. FedEx anticipates it will lay off 1,700 to 2,000 employees um, reportedly, which will cost the company between $250 million and $375 million through 2026. Here's the latest update as of this broadcast for precious metals and oil, gold at 22.3850, silver at 29.15, Brent crude, made, Brent crude making its move up to $82.13. So we will see gold and silver make a move up parabolically once uh, they stop being able to suppress it down, which is coming more and more, uh, particularly with the fact that there's only gonna be one Fed rate cut. Okay, so here are the notable deaths. Annie Kent, best known for her role in Fair City, unexpectedly passed away on June 4th in a Beaumont hotel. She was reportedly surrounded by loved ones at the time of her death. Kent noticeably, excuse me, notably portrayed Angela O'Connell in Fair City from 2005 to 2006. She also appeared in the films The Commitments and P.S. I Love You. Josh Maravich, who played for LSU from 2001 to 2005, passed away at only 42. He is the son of legendary LSU legend Pete Maravich. Belgium's Prime Minister Alexander de Croo resigns. After his party was humiliated in the European Parliament elections over the weekend, French President Emmanuel Macron announced a snap in the elections from June 30th to July 7th. Marie Le Pen's hard right National Party received over 31.5% of the vote in the French European elections, more than double the share of Macron at only 15.2%. Anti-legal immigrant Malachi Steensen has been elected as their leadership in Dublin. Rosemary Kane has passed away at the age of 68 in Blackpool. Her family has confirmed it has been revealed that Rosemary, the multi-talented singer, presenter, and radio personality, died in Blackpool. A tribute on her Facebook page from her family read, it is with heavy hearts and enormously great sadness that we have to announce the passing of our much beloved Rosemary in her beloved second home of Blackpool. Rest in peace. Model Nimi Award, the 27-year-old son of supermodel and animal activist Trish Goff and Aaron Ward has passed away. Ward passed away on May 29th in his obituary. The cause of death was not yet disclosed. Sydney B. Felson, beloved co-founder of the seminal Los Angeles printmaking workshop Gemini GEL, died of renal failure on Sunday at his home in LA. He was 99. Doctor who dedicated his career advocating for the culturally competent mental health treatment of Asian Americans died on June 6th after complications resulting from open heart surgery. Emeritus professor Stanley Sue of the University of California Davis was 80. NBA legend Jerry West, whose prolific playing, coaching, and management career landed him on the league's logo, died on Wednesday. The 86-year-old had most recently been working for the Clippers. Jerry West was the ultimate personification of basketball excellence and a friend to all who knew him, passed away peacefully this morning at the age of 86, according to the Clippers. His wife, Karen, was faithfully and lovingly by his side. Ed Stone, the scientist who guided NASA's breakthrough Voyager mission to the outer planets for 50 years, who led the Jet Propulsion Laboratory when it first landed its rover on Mars, died Tuesday. He was 88. Akira Endo, a Japanese biochemist, whose fascination with the internal workings of fungi underpin research that ultimately discovered cholesterol-lowering statins in blue mold 
a find that revolutionized cardiovascular care and became ultimately one of the world's most widely used drugs, died on June 5th at the age of 90. Okay, and now for my commentary to you, uh, I just want to mop up a couple of things that were brought up in some of the comments. Uh, in regards to Jim Willie's interview last week and some of the language used at certain points, if you read our disclaimer, the views expressed by the guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions and beliefs of me, the host, or the management team. We don't condone cursing. Uh, we even say that in the disclaimer up front, but I think what it further serves to prove is we don't censor and control our guests. We don't tell them what to say, how to say, and we don't soundbite them so that you can get the best breadth and depth of content and hear from the horse's mouth what they have to say without any interference from us whatsoever. That's the overarching point that we want you to realize. So, and remember that your discernment is different from someone else's. What is, re what is real for you does not necessarily mean and preclude that it's real for someone else. Keep that in mind. It's a community thing more than individual. And, and please, I've said this before. So if this is for the new people, okay, you'll know for the, for the long stalwart fans here, just, you know, put this to the side and, and let it let it sit for the people who are new. Please don't ask us about dates or rates for currencies. We don't do that. We never will. For those of you who have been here for a while and are still asking that question, you haven't adjusted your mindset. You got to stop listening to gurus. That's what that means. Just be in service to the Lord. And I promise you, you will be more than happy with the rate of return. If God I can trust you, he will bless you to the measure of which he can trust you. It's as simple as that. But no more comments about dates and rates. We don't do that. We never will. That's not what we're about here. It's not. We're about puzzle pieces and community. Simple as that. And then I want to quote a scripture that uh, I think uh, really summates all this discussion quite well. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And the reason I bring this up is I want to talk to those who may be feeling a little bit discouraged from listening to outside news, fear porn, and doubters, because the enemy is always going to launch up these, these minions to try to distract you. Stand your ground for the truth. Guard your mindset against the haters, doubters, and trolls, and naysayers, whether they're on, in person or online, which most of the time is the latter. This can include friends, family members, coworkers, and even acquaintances. Just get rid of toxic people in negative situations. Get them out of your life. And do not allow anyone or anything to dox or gaslight you from what you know to be true. If you're here, it's because you know the truth and you know your talents and your kingdom worth and inheritance. And you must guard and hold that sacred the way you hold your children, your marriage, the Bible, your friendships and family sacred away from the robber barons. They're threatened because they know this is about to happen. And we are dealing with Ephesians 6.12, evil versus good, light versus dark, good, bad, whatever you, however you want to characterize it. And they know the wealth transfer that's coming. And their goal is to take your wealth away or take your optimism away before the RV, during the RV, and after the RV. So keeping your faith, your mindset grounded, and resisting evil and negativity is critical, particularly in this time when we're in the birthing pains process. That's it for now. Anything emergency breaks, we will do a, a breaking short video for you. Otherwise, have a great safe weekend, and we'll see you next week. Take care and God bless.